Here are the 10 most painful torture devices ever created. Now I warn you, proceed with caution if you're easily disturbed. What's happening everybody? Welcome back to FTD Facts. Leroy Kenton here. We got 10 of these devices to look at, so let's jump in. Number 10 leads us to the thumb screws. In medieval Europe, the thumb screws, sometimes referred to as pillow winks, emerge as a merciless torture device designed to inflict excruciating pain. These instruments were employed to crush the thumbs, fingers, and even the toes of the unfortunate victims. Placed within the contraption, the thumb, fingers, or the toes were subjected to immense pressure as screws were gradually tightened, causing pulverization. Now, in certain instances, the crushing bars were equipped with spikes, intensifying the agony inflicted on the individual. Interestingly though, during the Renaissance era in England, these devices were repurposed to straighten and elongate a woman's fingers in an effort to achieve an appearance of elegance. <laughs> That's an very interesting way to repurpose a torture device. Moving on to number nine, we have the Skull's Bridle. In the 16th century, both Scotland and England employed a device called the Skull's Bridle to punish women who were accused of being witches, shrews, or skulls. Its purpose was to publicly shame them. So how it worked is that this contraption consisted of an iron mask that was connected to a helmet. And then the woman's head would be secured with this apparatus and a bridle bit measuring about two inches long and one inch wide, studded with spikes, by the way, would be inserted into her mouth. And as you could imagine, as a result of this, she would be unable to speak or even move her tongue without experiencing some intense Pain. Coming down to the number eight spot, we have the tongue terror. Ouch, like just saying that word, like I could feel the pain of it all. The tongue terror, which resembled an oversized pair of scissors, served as a chilling tool during darker times in history. Its purpose was to effortlessly sever the tongue of its unfortunate victims. And the process began by using a device known as a mouth opener to forcibly pry open the victim's mouth. And once this was achieved, the iron made tongue terror would come into play firmly clasping on the individual's tongue with its rough grippers. Now, from there, very uncomfortably twitching the tortured person's tongue was the subsequent step. And then finally, with the screw tightened, the tongue would be brutally torn away, inflicting great pain on the victim. Ouch. Number seven, here we have the lead sprinkler. The lead sprinkler was a merciless instrument of torment and it stands among the cruelest devices conceived to inflict intense pain on a human being. Typically filled with molten lead, though other substances like tar, boiling oil, or scalding water were employed, this device operated at high temperatures capable of severely scorching the skin. The unfortunate victim would be subjected to torture by having the scorching content dripping onto their stomach or other vulnerable body parts, including the eyes. Now, in some cases, even molten silver would be poured onto a victim's eye yielding, of course, devastatingly fatal consequences. The knee splitter comes next at the number six spot. In the grim era of the 12th century Inquisition, a device known as the knee splitters found use. Consisting of two wooden blocks adorned with spikes, the severity of the punishment inflicted by this contraption was actually determined by the gravity of the individual's crime. So the number of spikes ranged from three to 20, and each of them served as a menacing implement to drive into the flesh of the victim. Once these spikes had become embedded in the victim's leg, the blocks would be gradually brought closer together through the manipulation of two substantial screws. Now the intent was to gradually pulverize the knee, mirroring the distressing name. Right? That is just, wow, mind blown. Coming up at number five, we have the Heretic's Fork. The Heretic's Fork stands as a chilling metal contraption characterized by two bipronged forks affixed to a belt that encircled the neck of the victim. 
Now this device featured one fork directed towards the chin, while the other pointed towards the sternum. To amplify the torment, the victim would be suspended, unable to rest or find any relief. The threat of excruciating pain loomed constantly as any lapse in vigilance would result in the prongs piercing their throat and chest. Now similarly, the neck could also be targeted utilizing a metal or wooden device embedded with spikes encircling the victim's neck. Now this apparatus effectively curtailed basic activities such as eating, lying down, or engaging in any normal function. The next device is the Scavenger's Daughter. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, the Scavenger's Daughter emerged as a tool employed against Protestants who were accused of treason. The device consisted of an iron hoop and its cruel mechanics unfolded as the victim was compelled to perch upon half of the hoop. Now the other half, controlled by a screw, would progressively constrict and that would forcibly contort the individual into an unbending crouch. The relentless tightening of the hinge positioned at the center of the apparatus had dire consequences, ultimately resulting in the fracturing of the victim's ribs and breastbone as well as the dislocation of their spine. Now the infliction extended beyond these agonizing injuries with bleeding often occurring from the fingertips and even the face. Coming up at the number three spot, let's talk about the rack. In various forms such as horses, the infamous instrument of torment known as the rack found widespread usage throughout Europe. The essence of the device involved restraining the victim while a mechanical apparatus tightened the ropes, inflicting excruciating pain as the joints were dislocated. Now the horse, for instance, involves suspending the victim atop a beam resembling an equestrian position with pulleys beneath that would further constrict the ropes. Now similarly, in the case of the strapado employed in Palestine, there was no supportive base for the body to rest upon. Instead, the prisoners bound arms would be forcibly yanked out of their socket by the act of hanging. Coming down to the number two spot, this leads us to the pair of anguish. Now the pair of anguish was a metal tool primarily used particularly on women. Now it took various forms and could be inserted into the female private part or the mouth or the throat and it resembled a pear in shape and this device featured four adjustable leaves that were manipulated by a screw located at the top. Now it was employed in cases involving accusations of witchcraft, having a miscarriage, homosexuality, adultery, blasphemy, as well as other perceived transgressions, primarily against women. Now, tragically, its purpose was to forcibly expand the opening of her lady bits, resulting in the tearing of muscles, causing severe and permanent internal damage. In certain instances, it was also utilized to dislocate or fracture jaw bones. Coming down to the number one spot, we have the Judas Cradle. Now the Judas Cradle consisted of a steel collar affixed to the victim's waist with a pyramid shaped apparatus that was forcibly inserted into the victim's body hole, whichever one. Now the pressure exerted by this, of course, inflicted excruciating pain and the one inflicting the punishment had the capability to raise and lower the victim using a system of ropes and pulleys, intensifying the penetration of the device and amplifying the suffering. These sessions often persisted for several days subjecting the victim to prolonged torment. Additionally, it's worth noting that the device was rarely cleaned and this resulted in potentially life-threatening infections. So guys, this was a look at 10 of the most painful torture devices ever created. I wanna know what you thought about this. Sound off down below in the comment section. If you did make it this far, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up for more videos like this. Until next time, guys, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you soon.